Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Study the world to see how things are connected. Where are you going? The technical school for artists. The women's entrance is in the back. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the fan carpet. My name's Jazzy Delissa. I play Thomasine in the film. Um, I am come into the film and I am Hilma's mother's nurse and then I develop a close relationship. I play Anna Castle in the film. Um, Anna and Hilma met at art school when they were um, sort of late teens and then um, yeah had a relationship sort of over their life that sort of changed from being partners to friends to falling out and then being friends again so yeah sort of lifelong partnership between the two of them. And I'm Rebecca Calder and I play Cornelia Sederberg, uh, who was one of the five in Swedish FM. Um, and Cornelia was also an artist and worked on many of the artworks with Hilma and the others, and uh, was thought to have made a lot of the drawings uh, for the first, I, mean, I can't even remember how many years, but many years. <laughs> And then um, I got to audition with Lassa and I mean that was yeah a dream come true and so I was crossing all my fingers and toes and luckily it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah similarly to work with Lassa and I think just reading the script I think it was very clear what a passion project it was for him um, and it was just such a wonder I've never you know read anything so female led especially a period drama had like queer relationships within it in a really positive light um, and just everything about it was just really exciting and felt so uh, fresh but yeah I think as soon as I met that uh, even on Zoom I was like well uh, just the most wonderful person as well as director. Yes. I love, I love <laughs> yeah. I know about it I'm sure but we had some crazy for me, the most memorable were the séance scenes, yeah, like the cross falling off the wall, yeah. that kind of thing, <laughs> like during filming, but they were pretty magical. And I think, I just watched the film this week, and I think that you can see that in the scenes. Yeah. I mean, all of it was amazing, but it was also the art department were yeah. incredible. Like, how they recreated Hilma's works of art and just being surrounded by that all the time. It was so beautiful. Yeah, I definitely second the seance scenes. They were very, there was something, something going on there. But yeah, um, the, the set that was created for the women's atelier with all of the paintings hanging and the days that we got to um, 
sort of paint them all and, and shoot all of those scenes and we literally just, I think even in, in between takes, we just carried on. It just felt like a very, that was a wonderful day. Yeah. I, yeah. We didn't want to stop. We didn't want to stop. stop. Yeah, like, no, you've got to save some for the actual film. So yeah, that was wonderful. I have two, when I'm asked that, two pop into my mind, but it always changes, right? But um, I love Dancer in the Dark. So many, I don't even know where to start. Um, I mean, yeah, so many for, that range like from films I watched as a child to now I couldn't even begin to choose, really. Because all different films give you something out, like a little bit. Mm, yeah. I, was, I mean, I was obsessed with Tim Burton and Sweeney Todd. For a very long time. This is where, when I watched that, I was like, ooh, this is my vibe. Yes. <laughs> <That's my favorite. laughs> um, but, but yeah, I'm similar. I love, I love films that break your heart. Films like I have seven pounds every time I watch that film with Will Smith. That, yeah, never gets old watching that film, so that's probably up there for me as well. I will play Mrs. Lovett one day. I'm putting that out into the universe. <laughs> Put it out there. <laughs> I'll make a prequel. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a huge, it's a huge privilege, and I think it's such a joy that, um, you know, to find something that you just love doing and are so passionate about, and that there's like a kind of an industry for it. Um, but yeah, telling stories like this, especially stories in history of you know people who are unknown and did never sort of had the spotlight on them or had their contributions recognised, I think, as an extra special layer to that. Yeah. It really feels um, purposeful. I completely agree, and I feel so lucky to be a part of this film and to be able to be telling this story of about women who were really ahead of their time, as you said, weren't recognised. And so being able to be a small part of bringing the story to light Incredible. Um, I think the best part of being a storyteller as an actor is it's sort of like a self therapy sometimes. We do <laughs> crazy things. I, I play characters that do uh, the most disturbing things, and sometimes it's a release for us personally to go through those traumas and we let things go. But equally, in telling that story, I think people respond, you know, we're, we're telling stories that affect people, people who have lived through those similar experiences and we have an opportunity to um, help connect and heal in some way, I really think art heals us sometimes as an audience, as a viewer, it does for me when I watch, when I watch films that really move me, mm. see something in art, theatre. Yeah. yeah, I say this, yeah. exactly, and it's a privilege, it's a real privilege to do what we do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've got a film I'm very excited about, um, but I don't know when. I think it will be next year, because I'm finishing off post-production, and it's called House in Jerusalem. I can't say too much about it, but it's um, when I read the script, it was one of those scripts that um, I just was so desperate to do it, and I was very lucky to be a part of it. It's a day five film, um, and I've got a couple of TV shows coming. Um, I just did a show called Vampire Academy, which is currently out, um, and um, I also just filmed a part in Top Boy. I'm, I'm just going in to workshop a new musical in a couple of weeks, um, which I'm really excited about, so going back to theatre and uh, yeah, delving into that. Yeah, I mean they're so different, I think, stage and screen, and especially mm -hmm. like even musical mm -hmm. and play within theatre, um, I know everyone says acting is acting, but I, it's, I do find them very, very different ways of working, so it's nice to kind of yeah. keep stretching yourself in those different ways and, and learning and getting better at all the kind of different mediums mm -hmm. of performance.
film when I was about 18, um, and the, uh, I'd never acted before. I'd made a documentary, so I was quite used to talk, being in front of the camera. Um, so I think that gave me a slight ease when I then auditioned for this film, and I ended up getting the part. And then that film went on to do quite well, and it went to Sundance, and um, after that, I really realized that this was what I wanted to do, so I decided to go off to drama school and then kind of continued from that. Um, Your story's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Um, uh, I moved to London when I was 18, sort of just to pursue acting. I sort of decided I wanted to do it when I was a teenager. I had an amazing drama teacher, come on story. Um, so yeah, I moved to London when I was 18 and was just auditioning for drama school and eventually got in about uh, two years ago, so I just finished, but um, I got this job uh, at the end of my first year, um, so this has been my first film, so this is kind of my entry into the industry. Amazing. Yeah, but it didn't feel like it, it really didn't. I, like, I couldn't have asked for a better team, everyone was just wonderful. Um, and I kind of got into it accidentally. It wasn't in my periphery or in my family or anyone. I didn't know anyone in this industry. And my sister did a bit of drama and we had emigrated to Australia. And we had Geordie accents. And there was a series they were looking for kids. Um, it was called The Leaving of Liverpool by the BBC many years ago. Um, and I was in the waiting room and they said, oh, would your sister like to? Audition, yeah. I'm sure I hate people saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I got the job. <laughs> a, little, a little part in the series, and I was only about 11 or 12. And then, um, and then I kind of came into it later. Actually, I worked. Um, my dad was a, my dad's a musician. He was like, if you want to be an actor, he's like, you need to buy a flat first. <laughs> he's like, because it's really hard. And um, so I got a job in Liverpool Street and did that kind of life for a few years and then became an actor and I've been, I suppose, acting for about 20 years now. But um, yeah, it was accidental. Just I, the lead girl in the show when I was a kid, Christine Tramarco, she's a Liverpudlian actress. She was incredible and inspired me so much. And I got to work with her last year on a series for oh, Sky. Wow. And I said to her, you're the reason I became an actor because oh. you were so... She's so moving in this, in this series, and she was 13 at the time. Wow. Yeah, the rest is history, so she made you become one. I think a different perspective. Um, mm. This story has to be told, it has to be heard. We owe it to Hilma, we owe it to the rest of the women yeah. involved, um, because the, the recognition is one thing for sure, but it's also, this is a time where we don't want this to happen anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I kind of learn about these women as well, and that's really to fight. Yeah, I really like the sort of change of perspective. I think the film is so much about collaboration and, and mm. the people around you is what makes you who you are in your life, what it is. So sort of coming out and sort of seeing that in everyone's own life as well. Mm. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. I was holding the brush, but I didn't paint it myself. We need to show this work for all of us. What do you think? Uh... They just can't see exactly what you see. No one understands what you're doing. You move, Glenn. Sorry, it's an old photo. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, 
the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.